Hey, good afternoon. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thanks for uh, willing to do this. Oh, of course. So I could just uh, jump around then before getting to Fire Emblem. What's up? I just jump around then with your career so far before getting to Fire Emblem. <laughs> Such as it is. Yeah, no, I'm more than happy to start wherever. <laughs> yeah. So uh, first thing I can ask is just um, what led up to you pursuing acting professionally or voice acting professionally? Oh, golly. Uh, <laughs> start with a nice, easy softball question, huh? Um, I guess. Well, it, it's something that I've been interested to do all of my life, but I think like a lot of people, I kind of grew up feeling like I needed to follow a certain path and check some boxes. So I, I only recently kind of gave myself permission to really start um, pursuing acting and, and seriously and professionally. But I think that it all, it all just kind of, for me, it comes down to a love of stories and storytelling. I've always wanted to be in, involved in the creation of that kind of media in one facet or another ever since I was very small. So it has coalesced into voice acting. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have it any other way. Are you originally from California? Yeah, I grew up mostly in Northern California. Okay. And then I've lived down South most of my adult life. Mm -hmm. So then what was the... Uh any kind of first professional VO gigs that you got paid for? <laughs> oh, first, especially right now, I think when it's so, when there's so much independent media, it's hard to separate, right? I, I was in professional productions that I certainly wasn't paid for at first, but uh, probably Catalyst Wake, I think was the first, my first paid uh, work. Mm -hmm. You can find it on Steam. <laughs> a very, really excellent visual novel. It was a lot of fun to work on. And did you, when you first uh, got into VO, were you just trying to pursue everything or was there a, a, like a specific outlet that you wanted to focus on? Gosh, my, my approach to my career, what I try to do is, and what I tell people, um, you know, friends and, and peers who are in the same stage as I am is open mind, open heart. Mm -hmm. So like I, like I mentioned, I think for me, the most important thing was I want to be involved in storytelling. I want to help create these worlds that I love so much. So I'm going to do that. However, someone will let me do that, you know? So I did, uh, I started out doing um, a lot of uh, audiobook work and things like that, kind of getting to know my equipment and getting to know myself as an actor. And, um, and then just kind of casting about for opportunities, kind of putting that intention, <laughs> I sound very hippy dippy, but putting that intention out into the universe and seeing what it offered to me and just kind of throwing myself into whatever projects wanted to have me along. So uh, it's been, and it's been wonderful. I love everything that I've gotten the opportunity to participate in mm -hmm. um, and, and everything, you know, gives you more tools and, and uh, you get to meet a lot of other wonderful creatives. So I feel like I'm always skirting around, like not quite directly answering your question. Oh, okay. <laughs> to forgive me. <laughs> Was there a special story of how you got into a uh, SAG? Oh, uh, <laughs> um, you'll have to ask my future self. I'm non-union. <laughs> okay. Because I've actually been, even with how many Fire Emblem Heroes interviews I've done, um, that's a is that is that a non-union project? You know, uh, I can't speak to the whole thing. I was hired as a non-union performer so yeah. that uh yeah i actually for all um, the work that i've done so far I, I don't have a single sag credit okay so which is all right i mean i i love working on i know that there's different ways to do it shame on me for not knowing more about it already but um i actually worry sometimes i, I love the Indie games and indie media have been going in so many interesting directions, and I really, really enjoy working with those creators, which is not to say that I wouldn't love to be on a big SAG title, but I would hate to be barred from those spaces, you know, especially as like a non-binary person, as a queer person. There's so much interesting representation happening and so many stories being told in those spaces that I think mainstream media is still kind of catching up to, mm -hmm. so all that to say long so what all of that off of the wild tangent off of the no i'm not sag <laughs> <laughs> working on it 
And it does look like you still um, actively cosplay. You know, not so much since the pandemic. I think that that was a casualty of the pandemic and also a casualty of the uh, 24 hour a day <laughs> grind that is, uh, I, I made the the leap to full-time voice acting late last year. Okay. And it just, uh, I no longer have as much time to spend uh, hand sewing and, <laughs> and yeah. fabric painting, but I'd like to get back into it. Mm -hmm. I do love it. Again, I think just as an extension of wanting to be viscerally involved in the stories that are important to me. Mm -hmm. And were there, um, or if there still are like voice actors who work in anime specifically that uh, inspired you the most? Oh, definitely. Uh, my absolute hero. Um, I've met him twice and I cried both times. Uh, Crispin Freeman yeah. is a great inspiration to me. And I think if anybody is looking to get into voice acting, his voice acting mastery podcast uh, was just a guiding light in the dark tunnel that is the beginning of pursuing this career for me. I, I listened to it constantly and I and I still repeat to myself some of the uh, the uh, you know different lessons that I learned from those so for sure well because I'm thinking of Crispin Freeman I'm thinking I got to meet Scott McNeil when I was very little and uh, right. that was a great experience as well he's fantastic um, Patrick Seitz I'm uh, very very jealous of his IMDB I, I won't ever be able to <laughs> a lot of those roles but sometimes you know you look at a certain person's uh credits list and you're like yeah i would love to play those characters i don't quite have the chords for it yet <laughs> uh, was, but yeah like a bunch of go ahead what was what was the class that you took with uh, christian banas oh uh christian banas and i met in um one of the bang zoom workshops i think julie Madalena. julie's What's that? Yeah. Um, character 101. Yep. Gosh, like back and back and back. And then we ran into each other at a, it was funny because um, two slots had just barely opened up for one of their uh, ADR workshops that they used to do midweek in the studio. And both of us completely separately were like, yeah, I haven't been in there in a while. I'll jump in if there's an opening. And so we ended up going there and reconnected and um, we've kind of been in the trenches together ever since mm -hmm. he has, uh, absolutely been, uh, it's been so, so, so helpful and vital to have somebody to just kind of like lean on and, and talk to you about this whole process. Cause it, it's a lot of peaks and valleys, I think in this work, and you, you really have to have a strong, uh, support system amongst your peers of, of people who really understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was back when, um, would have been around like August of last year when Toma came out, I interviewed him and he's just like one of the most wholesome people in VO. Oh, isn't he though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I adore him. Um, he was just, I just went to a, an interview that uh, Jamil Berger did with him and um, I had to hop out for some other commitment, but he stayed there for just hours doing Q and A. Like Christian, you just how is there any of you left at the end of the day? <laughs> the way that he gives himself to others, it, yeah. it's no, he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, who who else are you closest to then in the VO community in LA? Oh golly, um, you know it's been it's been kind of different little circles and and. Um, I think unfortunately the we had a little we had a little steady group Christian and I way back when but uh, the others from from that uh, little circle are no longer uh, pursuing this with us quite so much. Oh, um, but now I think mostly Christian and then um, my partner Tim Alexander, thankfully also a voice actor. I think it, it's probably hard to. <laughs> <laughs> hard to have a partner outside these circles yeah uh, just with the way scheduling and everything is mm -hmm. yeah and then some castmates from some other um productions so considering um you took adr classes were you also hoping to get into anime then <laughs> well i mean i think like a like a lot of people who pursue this career i watched a lot of anime growing up and um i think that just the way it has shaken out and, and also increasingly, I don't watch as much anime as I play games. Yeah. 
Um, and that's also been the direction that my career has kind of been going in. So I would love to be in, uh, in animation. I don't have a ton of, uh, I think I have about one animation credit and it was done pre-lay. Actually, you can't ever see my character's face. She has a, a helmet on the whole time. Oh. So, um, but I just took, um, another ADR class recently and it, it's a lot of fun. It's an interesting challenge. I love playing rhythm games. So there's something about there's something about beats doing the beeps and the lip flap that is is very appealing. Um, so yeah, I'd love to, and I'm always trying to get skills. Like I I want to have. If you interview if you, if you interviewed Christian, you probably get this got this from him as well because I think I stole it from him. But it's uh, right place, right time, right toolbox. Yeah. Right. So you absolutely have to make sure that you know how to do anything that somebody might ask you to do and any time that I have an opportunity to take a class or gain some skills, I'm all about it. For me too, I just think it's especially cool that um, people like Julie, Madalena are still actively working in anime because I grew up with her in like Magic Knight, Ray Earth and Ghost in the Shell and right. she was in stuff like that. And she's just so amazing. I think especially um, all the classes that Bang Zoom are so welcoming. The The environment there is, it's such a like family atmosphere and, and they make you feel so, because I really feel like one of the biggest hurdles in this profession is just feeling like you are allowed to be in the room. Mm -hmm. Especially I think for those of us who grew up watching anime and really idolizing these performances and these performers, that's difficult. And as long as you have that in your head and your heart that like, I don't really belong here. I mean, like the imposter syndrome never goes away away, yeah. <laughs> but it's very difficult. And, and having those really safe spaces with those really encouraging teachers is so, so important. And, and I just adore all of them so much. Mm -hmm. So uh, more of a technical vocal question. Um, what do you think is the case where you've had to alter your voice the most so far? I was thinking about it. And I actually opened up my webpage and I was like going through. <laughs> Um, I haven't had a lot of extreme, um, extreme differences. Uh, I did have to do a little, this is the problem, um, of being someone in the sort of nascence of their voiceover career. I want to tell you one, but I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. Uh, no <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a very, a, a kind of minor role in, in a podcast that'll be coming out, I think later this year. That, uh, that did require a little bit more vocal gymnastics than most, but by and large, I kind of sit in a certain, a certain range and it's um, a little bit more about internal mm -hmm. changes than it is um, making dramatic shifts to my voice. Have you got the opportunity to do uh, boy voices for anything yet? Uh, not... Not that I can think of offhand, not really. I've auditioned for uh, a lot. And I'd love to, I'd love to uh, get to play some of those characters, but. So then when, um, was, I know it kind of depends on the person, but was, uh, was Fire Emblem kind of just a general audition? Oh, what do you mean by a general audition? Did it just, uh, like, did you just get the audition normally or did it, um, because I know some people took a workshop first and that's how they got it. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, yeah, no. It, um, it's just one that I was sent. Yeah. And then um, having talked to Caitlin Galt as well, what was your experience being directed by her? <laughs> oh, everybody was wonderful. Um, it was one of my first remote sessions. So I think I was... I was very, very worried about all of the technical aspects, but everybody was, everybody was wonderful and, and, um, gave a lot of really good insight into the context. I think you've, I believe from what I listened to of your other interviews, many people had the same experience. I was not told who I would be playing until I walked into the room or walked into this room. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have a lot of time to do the character work that I would usually like to have done coming into it but um but all the the but the director and the um representatives from the client that were there really insightful and and really talked me through 
what they wanted in a way that really let me connect with it, which I always appreciate. Mm -hmm. Do you also think that um, Hilda is the darkest headspace you've had to go? (laughs) Well, again, um, I had those lines and the context that they gave me in the moment. I've played, I believe, well, with the exception of heroes, uh, not heroes, ha ha ha, just kidding. That's because you just said it. Warriors is what I meant to say. With the exception of warriors, because I do like the tactics element is my favorite part. Um, I've played all the games that have been released in English. And I actually, when they showed me the picture, I was like, I am mortified as a Fire Emblem enthusiast to, <laughs> to not know who this person is by sight, but but uh, because that game hasn't been localized. I know there's emulators you can get of that one and 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 the others they haven't brought over yet, but mm-hmm. I am waiting. <laughs> I'm really hoping that they'll do a an Echoes style remake, especially of the prequel sequel to Blaze to uh, Reckon Okem. Yeah, got my fingers crossed. Echoes was so good, mm-hmm. and I just want more of that. <laughs> well, what what uh, what aspects of Hilda could you relate to at all then? Mm. I think it. I know that. Of course, the things that she has done are unforgivable. <laughs> I don't want to be a Hilda apologist, but I do think that, you know, part of being an actor and, and also just part of the fun of being, uh, I do, you know, through whatever cosmic, whatever meaning you want to attribute to it, I play a lot of antagonists. And I think that the, the wonderful thing about it is the thing to always remember is that nobody is the, and this is another old adage that I'm just stealing from, from other coaching, but no one is the villain in their own story. Yeah. Right. And I think that there's something relatable in feeling like something's been taken from you or that you're owed by the world. I think we can all kind of in one context or another, we can feel like I felt like I deserved something that I was denied or that someone took from me. And I'm going to, find a way to redeem it Mm -hmm. i think that a lot of the 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 drive you know what i mean like yes a terrible an objectively terrible person but you gotta admire the uh this is a person who will stop at nothing right and it's so fun to be in you know to be able to cast aside all self-doubt and really just be like I'm right. <laughs> I'm absolutely right and nothing and you know nothing is allowed to stand in my way. It's it's a very it's very energizing. <laughs> it's this is probably obvious but it sounds like you were already playing heroes before you got the role. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll admit every time they um I love tactics games. Um But optimizing equipment and things like this, these are my weaknesses. So Fire Emblem Heroes is a very hard game. I'll admit I sat there for the longest time after they finally finally, uh, released Hilda's map. And I was like, am I really not going to be able to get this character? (laughs) It took some doing. Yeah. Well, which which units or characters do you uh, main then? (laughs) Well, I had a really good run. Uh, I think that this might be, I've heard that this is something that happens when you stop playing a game and then come back to it after, after a a certain amount of time, because um, I try to restrict myself to having only one game on my phone at the time, at a time, besides my uh, water tracker. Right now it's the, the Witcher Monster Slayer. Okay. So I hadn't played Fire Emblem Heroes in a while. (laughs) So I opened it back up and I pulled a bunch of new characters and being more recent, I think that they're a little bit more viable in the game's current meta yeah. so i've been bouncing back and forth leveling people um i think dimitri was the main reason that i could beat hilda's map <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> yeah it is it's really interesting too because i mean obviously there's not like there's not a whole lot of characters in the game yet that are just wholly evil without being possessed or fallen <laughs> <laughs> no one's wholly what it, what is evil really Well, do you have um, any favorite lines? No, I guess not particularly. I love the whole energy. I love the vibe. Yeah, there were, uh, I, maybe you've seen it already, but just um, 
lot of the general consensus of the fan base for heroes just thought that uh, they were just blown away by your performance. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, I, I appreciate it so much. I, I was so worried, especially I'll, I'll admit I uh, recorded it quite a while before it was released in my, in my whole heart. I was thinking it's probably bad. I'm going to listen to it. And I'm going to be like, Oh, what have I done? <laughs> so I was really, really grateful uh, for all the positive response and everybody was very, uh, very supportive. And I'm, I'm very, very happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this kind of touches on, um, well, maybe, maybe we already covered it, but, um, with how some, or with, with how some of her lines are so, uh, you know, intense, were there any that were particularly emotionally difficult to get through or? Um, I think that again, coming in without having had the time to like really sit and ruminate, um, she has a line about vengeance, about avenging her father and her son. And, and, um, I wanted to know the greater context, right? I invented something for myself in the moment, but I wanted to go back and, um, and dig into what that meant to me and, and have stronger pictures. But I think that one was probably the most... And, and I feel like when you were talking about earlier, like what part is empathetic and talking about people who are, are evil or, you know, who are <laughs> patently purely evil. I feel like built into that line, there's a lot of that motivation, a lot of that hurt yeah. that becomes, I think, I mean, that's, that's kind of a lot of, um, I'm playing through three houses. I'll admit that came at, that was released at, at a time in my life where I didn't play it immediately. And then I just. So much to my shame, I'm playing through it now. But that story is the story of anyone can have a bad day, right? It's that Batman yeah. story. Um, and I, I just try to hold on to that when I'm playing antagonists and, and find like, what was it that for you was the breaking point? And I think that there's a lot built into that line mm -hmm. of this is the thing that the world has done to me to a point where I no longer have empathy for other people mm -hmm. and I'm able to do the things that I do without remorse. I think that um, at least as far as far as people know, like for, based off the lines that her, her relationships with them, like Ishtar and uh, the other Tatayalu or, um, and then mm -hmm. how much she hates Selif, like those are all really interesting to look into. Yeah, I think so. I've really got to find a, a mod of that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because after when that when that banner came out, um, I did uh, Courtney Lynn and uh, Joe M Mucciolo, who were Arthur and Tina, like that that same week. So. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I took so long. <laughs> oh, no problem. So, is there anything else that's uh, upcoming that you're part of that you can talk about? Well. You can't see my chart. This <laughs> Rogue Maker. Uh, I, have a, I have a handful of podcasts that are going to be. Uh, Rogue Maker just released their second episode today, uh, and I, that one's been was super super fun to work on. Also, um, and then Badlands Cola should be. Uh, they don't have an official release date yet that I'm allowed to mention, but please keep an eye out in the next couple of months. Uh, that. I think one of your one of your questions you kind of touched on it earlier as far as darkest emotional place that show. Okay. Uh, I am a huge coward. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I play all my horror games in the middle of the day. Um, and I, but yet I still, I keep ending up on horror podcasts, but, but it was an absolute joy to work on and emotionally devastating. Um, so please look forward to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you want to say to the Fire Emblem subreddit? Oh, golly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what people are going to watch this. I thought we were just having a nice conversation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess just um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, especially as uh, I think someone very kindly pointed out, Hilda being my only major credit. Uh, I'm, I am pretty new to the paid work part of this uh, career and just seeing everybody's really supportive comments and, and kindness um just means the absolute world and getting to feel even a little bit like I got to contribute to something that people really enjoyed it just makes me 
stoked to get up in the morning and do my job. Mm -hmm. And special shout out to the very nice person who very politely and kindly uh, corrected my pronouns. <laughs> I think that was on the YouTube video, but yeah. I was, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Everybody's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love the Fire Emblem community, honestly, as a cosplayer, as a, as a player, player, as, you know, and uh, hopefully increasingly as a voice actor, I absolutely love this space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I mean, I, I was already doing interviews before correlating it to the subreddit, but once I started doing that, I was, there's like, there's, I don't think there's a more supportive fan base that is out there than the Fire Emblem fan base. Right. Yeah, honestly, I, it's, it's a great group of people and I've met so many people, especially at gatherings at conventions and things like that, that, that have become, you know, lifelong friendships. It, it's. I don't know. Something about turn-based tactics games. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I know, of course, your career is still blossoming, but uh, my final question is always asking, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? I guess when I was growing up, books and anime, comics, things like this, games, it was a way for me to, how can I put it? process my feelings like a safe place to go and and you know it's catharsis when you need catharsis it's comfort when you need comfort like media is so powerful in that way mm -hmm. and I if I could feel like even a little bit that I had helped make something that somebody could find some kind of solace in you know it doesn't need to be wildly popular but if I could just feel like I mean, I, I want to hope that it's like, I am obsessed with the projects that I've been able to participate in. And I hope that um, some of them can be that for somebody, but, but I'd like to, I'd like to think I'm building that. Mm -hmm. um, even if I'm just, you know, some small cog in the, in the, the grand machine, <laughs> <laughs> additional voices. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad that we got to do this. Yeah, thank you so much. This was super fun. Um, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll, be sure, soon, I'm sure. I'll be sure to send it to you once I have it up as well. Oh, thank you. I, I will, uh, I'll leave it in my inbox for a long time and stress. And then eventually I'll watch it and I'm sure I'll be like, oh, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.